okay, I'm making my way up the ridge here. My thought is, if I can get up this ridge, where this part of the bush is burnt, I want to get way away from people and everything. So, this has been a fire through here not long ago. I don't know if it was a natural one or it's back burning. But uh, it's given me a bit of a easy way to get up. So, when I get to the top, I'm gonna have a look around and then see exactly where <laughs> I'm gonna put my gear. But uh, I've seen this here, so I thought, why not? I'm gonna come up through here where it's easy to get up. I've got my gaiters on, and hopefully, don't run into any snakes. I'm about halfway up so far, so I'll keep going and hopefully it doesn't take me much longer to pass. Not much. Just gotta get around all these rocks. Reached the top of the ridge here now and uh, it's warm. So I always bring like a little hand towel and uh, Wipe the sweat off my face, but it should get easier from here. I'm hoping. So, don't know how far this fire did burn. But it did burn right up to the top. Don't know how far it went before they stopped it. Yeah. A lot of thick charcoal on these trees and this fire burn up inside as well as outside of this tree. You know, so it's, it's a pretty burnt area. It gets very hot. These bushfires and when the wind comes up it makes it five times as bad. So I'm just gonna cruise along the up the top of the ridge here. So it took me about probably 20 minutes to get up. So once I've seen the fire was here and it burnt all the bushes away, it made it twice as easy for me to get up here. So, just puffing a little bit, trying to get my breath back, because I uh, try to get up there as quick as I can. So, as you can see, there's really nothing left on the bottom. All the leaves that are there now are just falling off the dead trees, but all the litter on the bottom, sticks and everything, that's the fuel for the fire. So it just burns and it takes a lot of fighting to put out. Uh, don't know how much is burned here. And we'll keep going along until we uh, reach a good area. Set up some gear, could be a kilometer or two going through this until I find a good area. I've gone way off the track here and there's a bit of a rock stack. I know I don't take much notice of them but you know there's no trail here. It's in the middle of a burn area and it's right on an area where it's a rocky platform here. It's just rock under here. That's solid rock so I don't know who put that there. Anyway we'll keep going and see what else we find. Another thing you've got to watch out while you're walking through these areas that are burnt that these trees don't suddenly fall apart and give way and fall on you so you've got to keep that in mind as well. You can already see plants rejuvenating already so a bit of rain they'll shoot up and it'll be like it hasn't been here the only signs will be the tree trunks of the trees be all black. There's a few trees that are Real small ones. They got new leaves, new shoots. A, you can see it's got it's got bugs in it. You can see the bugs, and they eat. They eat part of the tree out, so that's caused 
of that tree falling over was infest infestation of bugs. The fly doesn't stop the native plants for too long. They've been around too long and been through so many fires, they regenerate pretty quick. It's only the introduced species that uh, burn out and die, but the native ones, they, uh, they adapt to the fire and it regenerates them. Weird. And it's a area of really soft dirt that's been put up into a mound. And I thought, you know, that looked weird, but there's another one here. There's been no tree here for ages. You know, this is really soft. So, it's weird. It's like something's been digging out there and putting it into a mound. I don't know. The scrub turkeys or something make mounds like this. There's one there, and there's one over there. It looks like there's an old one just here. It's funny how all these rocks are laid like this. It's just like there's like it was a building here and it's all fallen over. That's just the natural formation, it's just how it breaks up over the years. Alright, I managed to get up here, it's not too hard, it's just a bit tricky, one or two steps. Doesn't look like anything's been messing around in here. If there was, you'd see, you know, marks in the sand. There'd be marks around. There's just little marks here where maybe something walked through, or there's just bugs here digging holes in it. But there's nothing that's been. around here until I came so I'll keep going so I get down here now and this is how in Australia the fire regenerates the bush these seeds don't pop open until it gets really hot and when it's hot it takes a while for them to pop open so the seeds don't get burnt they drop down and uh, a new plant starts to grow so the fire does good things in one way and in the other way it just takes the whole strips the land bare alright look at this overhang there's a lot up here I wanted to come up here a while ago. Alright, now, let me get out of this way. I thought there could have been footsteps here. And I think it's a wallaby, or more likely a wombat. Digging holes. It did look like footprints for a sec, or some sort of footprint, but they're too round, they're not long. There's a few diggings up here, so wallabies are, well, mate, sorry, the wombats are the, probably the culprits there. Maybe the odd uh, wire bird, but they usually don't usually dig that like that. They usually just scratch the surface for worms and then keep going. Alright, another little overhang. There, where the water's been dropping, get over here where it's a bit bigger so I can have a look. There we go, look at this. I can get right in here. Look at that. So, if anything was living in here, other than a wombat walking through, he's come through and made his little walk around. You can see his footprints and he's run out there. 
looks like a little snake with a line over there. You can see that line in the middle. But there's no really signs of footprints or I did come to one of these um, overhangs before long ago and in the sand there was like three finger marks like that but there was a lot of sand loose sand on there but if you're up here and it's raining you can get out of it and there's a, so have a little track It hasn't been uh, any yowies in here. And we're taking that spot. The fire was so intense, it just left the base of it in the ground. And then there's like no trace of the tree. It's just gone. Unreal. Well, this is an area where these, a lot of these trees are bent over, as you can see. And always people say, "Yeah, we do it," but probably 99% of the time it's weather and or the fire. So the heat just takes all the water out of the tree, and they just bend. So. Here's an example right here, and the fire's gone through here, they're all bending down, so. It's not always the owies. It's getting a bit tricky now. I've got to get down this ridge. I've checked out the top there, there's just nothing there, it's all burnt out. But I just keep checking out all these rocky ledges. See if anything can... Uh, well, anything has been living around here. I haven't seen any sign of anything. I'm starting to hear more wildlife because it's greener around here. I was going to go down that way, hang around there, down there, but if I can just get down. This gap here, a few meters, and then it's pretty easy down to for another 10 meters. Let's give it a go. Eh? Let's see how we go. Okay, and then if you can jam your foot between the gap, that's what you do. Brace yourself, just find some good areas to hold. If there's a bit of moss or something there, get rid of it. You don't want to slip, you want to know what you actually got your hand on. So get your hands right. I'm using my shoulder on strength. Just put my foot down. A little staircase down here. Uh, it wasn't that steep, but if you fall the wrong way, hurt your ankle. I'm going to find your own way back to the trail, because I'm way off the trail. So, just simple, easy steps at the moment. Let's check this big block ledge. A lot of areas here where... This is a nice big one. Go and have a look and see what's been disturbed here. Oh, nice little spider. Don't want to run into him. around here or walking through just looks like where when it's been raining the water's come down and it's made its way down through the sand it's 
quite a big rock ledge this one. Let's see if I can get up here a bit. Nothing's been through here. It's a bit black up there for some reason. I wonder if the rain's bringing some of the burnings through the rock somehow. Pushing it through. Right, nothing's been in here, so I'm gonna make my way back down this way. All right, I'm just gonna leave this rock ledge here now, and I found another one just around here. So we'll get through this area first. Another small one. This looks bigger. This is opposite to the way I wanted to go, but there we go. I might find something good up here. Really fascinating how the wind and the rain shapes the sandstone like this. And it is very brittle, so I don't want to hang under here that long. These rocks fall down all the time. It's funny how you got your hand's cave, and uh, you've got caves like this, and there's no paintings on them. So, now what made that one special? That water's just been hitting that somewhere up there. There's no markings or anything. There's really another place where you can you can get out of the rain, but it's not a place where you want to sleep. It's, it's not flat. There's no foot marks, finger marks, or anything. Don't oh, watch your footing around here because it's all on a slope. So and there's loose dirt. So I really haven't seen any signs of anything around here. Is it because the fires kept everything away? Well, I just don't use this region. So in this area, I'll just go around a bit more. Let's see what's around here. But I do want to go back the other way eventually. No, it's a bad ore. What's this in here? No, nothing's been using that, is it? I'll have a look. There are these burnt trees. Alright, I'm making my way down. Seems to be away from the fire now. I think it's got this far and stopped. So this is the sections I want to look at. To put some gear in. 
I don't know how good it's going to be. I'm going to set it up and fingers crossed. This wasn't too hard to get down here. been like by the hike on the top <laughs> if there was no fire. I'm just trying to see if I can get across there somehow. I've got all the trees there. Now I've got vines up this way. follow this creek back down to the trail. Okay, I made my way down to the water. So I'm just going to follow the creek along and uh, hopefully try and find a spot to set up my gear and then get out of here. But I've looked at the top of the ridge. There's nothing out there. Always wanted to have a look up there. So I've done that now. And uh, check out the sandy areas when I uh, have a make my way along this creek. This ends up going back to the trail. And uh, just gotta climb over the rocks and make my way up to where I want to go. Down the ridge there, down through here, and then through these rocks up here. It's probably a good five meters to the bottom there. Don't really want to go in there, it's pretty dry. So I thought I could find a way down to there from here. Yeah. I wanted to have a look in there. Um, I might have to go back over there, up here, up around there, and then slide down there. Unless I go through here and up around there and then down there. I reckon this way is easier. I've got to go back, unfortunately. I did see a big bearded water dragon in here. I might get a Alright. I made it down on this sandbank. A bit more of an effort. I had to go from that big rock over there all the way around through the bush and slid down here. Just want to have a look and see if there's any footprints or anything around here. It's just really hard to get to this spot. The only thing I'm finding is lizards. And there's a big eastern water dragon here. Maybe he's going underneath the rock. Some sort of camping utensil. Anyway, I'm not going to use it. What I might do, I might pack it in my bag and then chuck it out instead of leaving it here. 
There's obviously uh, nothing around here. I'm not going to get the big beaded border dragon on a video, but he's took off as soon as he see me up the top there. So I'm going to walk through this way till I find the area that I want to set my gear up. So, anyway, I'll keep going and uh, hopefully it's not too hard to walk through here. Seems a bit thick, but I've been bush bashing it all day, so what's new? Well, it's time to put the gloves on here. There's a lot more spiky things and um, vines, a lot of thorns on them, so I don't want to hurt myself. Going through the burnt bushland was like a little freeway to get through there real quick. So, hopefully, don't get any scratches on me. Just been making your way through the bush. Yeah. Heard like something was moving over there. So I'm going to stay still for a sec. Fire didn't reach this area. Can't hear nothing now. Must have been a bird. A few um, a few live birds here. But you see, there's a pool of water. There is a little rocky overhang here. So every one I find, I'm going to check out. It's like when it rains, the water comes down this section here. There's people been in there, like who's riding. So you can never get away from people. They're always falling any hard spots. So there's all names in there. So I'm not going to worry about going there. So I'm not far from the trail but I have taken I have gone all over that ridge so no one did no one goes up there. You get the locals that come around here. Another big skink. Let him go. So, wallaby tracks. Yeah, two fingers there, and two there. There's a big one in there, so it's like that. So. There's no footprints here. I had a bit of dirt on my arms from going through the fire, so I might just wash my arms in here while I can and, and keep going. You know, you don't want to get bit by one of these. As they jump around, I've been bitten twice by one, and it hurts worse than a bee for about half an hour. This is an area just off the trail, which is like two meters, and it's a little rocky overhang that you can go inside. And uh, so if it's raining, and you're walking this trail, you sit down on this rock, so this, and then look out. You could probably sit here quiet and people walk past and they wouldn't even know. Now this is a spot where I had my little encounter. And uh, yeah, I kind of got to here. And there was a try to get to an opening here. And uh, straight up here, there's a bigger tree just behind a smaller one. You can see it. 
and it was just his head was sticking out behind that tree. And we're about six, seven meters away. And uh, I was trying to film him, and I was actually pointing up like that because the screen on the old digital recorder had fogged up. It was raining hill through here. It's foggy. It's like nine o'clock in the morning, and uh, he was there. And yeah, you know, one minute he was there. Thirty seconds later, I got thirty seconds to see him, and then he was gone. Yeah, still stopped. So yeah. I had a good look at him. And right over that big, that thicker tree. He was right behind that. So where you see the bend in the tree, just as it straightens up, that's where his head was. He wasn't that tall, three foot, three and a half foot. And I didn't even see it run away. The fog came in the wind, wind and rain and gone. Yeah, st still stop here and have a look every time I uh, come through. For those of you who haven't really heard the story, um, way back in 2013, um, in the winter time, probably start of July, um, I uh, was down there, there you see a reddish tree, right there, next to the tree, just to the right of that tree, and then I was down there filming like a tree, you know, a small kind of tree, you know, so round, and it had been snapped, and I was just checking to see how hard or easy it is to snap it. And I bent it around in a circle, I couldn't break it, so it was, whatever broke it, broke it with extreme force. And while I was doing that, there is a pathway here, I think it should, it only goes so far up and then it stops. It's just people come down here, here and there, and they walk down here, think it's a trail and it's not. So anyway, I was standing down there, and um, I had my camera, and I turned it around to face towards me to try and see how hard it was to break this tree. And this little this little tree wasn't a big one anyway but I couldn't break it and at that time something stood here and I'm just under six foot just by a centimeter or two and then you know look my arms right up here you know so there's over seven foot and it's still three foot to go you know you're looking at 10 11 foot up to that rock ledge you know and it's just vertical you know there's nowhere to grab this you know the bits here they grab, but there's nowhere else to grab to climb up. So something come here, see me, stood in this area right here, and then noticed me, and then it just turned like that. And I only got six frames of it. And the way I was filming was um, I had to film, point the camera towards where I wanted to show the tree back. So I did point up this direction. It, 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 the foliage that you can see up here was much greener than what it was that day um, than what it was now I mean on that day it was much greener and I've done retakes a couple of weeks later after it happened and I was standing at the back here and one of my sons had the camera and you couldn't see me and even when I stood here way back then it was much bushier than it was and it is now, I was then, you couldn't see me. Um, I have got them videos there, so I'll, I will repost them. And um, you can show um, what Harry and myself, Harry came down and uh, he wanted to check out the area and then make a decision in his own mind what it could have been. That, you know, if it was someone standing here walking along, you wouldn't have seen them. They had to be, you know, this tall, or they were actually taller. You know, like, I can get a stick, um, I could probably say to you guys, you know, where the top, where the top of this stick is. Like, where the top of this stick is there, that's where the head was, it's probably way up there. 
you know, it's <laughs> something was here and um, I was standing right there, right next to this big rock ledge. It's 10 to 12 foot tall up here. I'd easily stand on my shoulders and I still wouldn't reach the top of that rock ledge. And um, yeah, the head area was where its head was way up here, like further, a couple of feet further than my hand. And uh, yeah, so if I pace, foot paces from where I was standing here, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you're going to say 15, you're going to say 25 paces to where I was that day, which I was down here. And the tree used to be somewhere, see I put my camera here, the tree used to be about here. So it's died and been washed away. So what I got is I got my camera. I'll put this rag in my hand. So what I got, I had the uh, camera pointing towards it. So I grabbed it, turned it around like that to put it down. And as I put it down on the rock here, it captured it in the background. So that's the story. So that's why I only got a few frames of it because I didn't even know it was there. Okay, um, I'm making my way out now. I've set up all my gear. I'm going to come back Saturday morning and pick it up. Uh, my trial cameras will be still running. Um, and they'll, uh, they've got 32 gig cards in them and brand new batteries. So, sound recorder's got the uh, power pack and it's got batteries in it. So, I'm looking at six nights and that's about the maximum I ever get with that setup is okay that's still a hell of a lot of recordings to go through and um, I haven't really did anything in this area for a long time but I've had most of my best results here so anyway we are making our way out now and uh, hopefully we get something in a week's time and I can show you all the results